Okay? Now, it's even much, much less likely that you'll go anywhere except into the esophagus. So, in general, oh, we're not, um, is there a way to put it up there so everybody can? But point being, unless you're looking at the oral cavity, you can easily spend 10 minutes, you know, there's the tonsils, there's the semi, but you are an emergency doc going after a foreign doc. So you want to do it kind of with a purpose. So I often will go past that upper deprotogeal sphincter and then worry about finding my lumen. Yeah, I know it's going to be in there somewhere. Or I'll just head down into the stomach. And I'm, uh, there we go. Okay. So other rules, I think I told my group that maybe I didn't tell you guys. The person scoping, never, ever, ever, cardinal sin to take your eyes off the screen. Got it? Because <laughs> you'll be amazed at how much can change even just that way. Everything else about the dog is somebody else's problem. Your, this is your job. We talked about, again, using the esophagus to already practice. So demand of yourself that you put things in the middle. Don't let yourself get lazy and, oh, well, I'm doing just fine. I'm doing, no, you aren't. Make sure that you can do this in the middle. And then, at least at my end, the semi-advanced end, we encourage you to start working. Okay, I'm an emergency guy. I'm looking for a GI foreign body. Let's get to the stomach. So can I do two things at once, keeping the lumen in the middle while advancing forward? And yeah, sure. It was in there somewhere, right? Another place your your skills will become very valuable is to show surgeons which side the vessel that ever vessel in puppies regurgitating puppies at, etc. So, then we talked about getting this view, right? Lower esophageal sphincter, and I mentioned that this is not a straight shot. A straight shot takes you again and again and again into that tissue right there, but there's a slight left hand turn to go through that. This sphincter only goes one place and your job is to only do one thing and then it gets through it. So don't take a whole lot of time trying to do it perfectly and visualize. Again, vast majority of times, if you just push forward and go, you're gonna end up in the right place. Now, this is obviously a picture we never saw yesterday, right? This is what it actually looks like, which is great. You wanna get into the habit of being able to recreate this view, because what this view is, is down the greater curvature, and if you follow all those rugae folds, they will naturally lead you to what looks like a floor that's about to take you into a cave. So, as I'm heading towards the floor, already in my mind I'm saying to get into that cave, I will need to look up. And remember how we look up? Big knob back. So as I'm advancing and bringing the big knob back, this is exactly what you guys did to retroflex and look at yourself. What I'm doing for now is to get into that cave that's right there in front of me, okay? So this is the look that very few of you got to see. That's the anterum, that's a, what do we call it? Cardiac, people call it different things, right? Cardiac. So you got to here, you didn't really see much, it was hidden or flat. So what you guys did yesterday, a lot of, was continue looking up and going forward. And that's what gives you this view, which is critical, because you'll often find some foreign bodies hanging out in this area that you maybe didn't appreciate on the way in. Try not to confuse that look there to the left of the scope with a hiatal hernia. That's a relatively natural or frequently seen kind of look uh, once you're insufflating the stomach. It's not a hiatal hernia. But if you get to here, you realize I've gone too far. So I need to now look down, which is big knob forward, and then there's the entrance to my cave. I move forward, again, getting a little resistance. I might get a little paradoxical, paradoxical movement. I push through that into the cave, and at the end of the cave, there's your pylori. Okay? The closer you get to a target, the slower you move and the smaller are your adjustments. Getting there, we should be moving four, six inches at a time. Bam! It makes no sense to move through the stomach a millimeter at a time. Get through it, but then as I get closer to this, now I slow up. So, one thing I maybe didn't emphasize enough, 
with foreign bodies, just like what with a Pythoras, have a plan and execute your plan. Every once in a while, you just get dumb nut lucky, and and I thought several times yesterday the snare just somehow magically went and grabbed your foreign body for you. That rarely happens. Have a plan in your head, and then your skill is to actually execute that plan. So. Even looking at a pylorus, I have a plan. Do I want to come from the bottom up or from the top down? Well, look at that. I have this ridge over the pylorus, that thing there. So it'd be terrible for me to try to come at it from the top. So already my plan will be, I will approach it from the bottom. And then the whole skill of the pylorus, looking through the pylorus, is being able to hold it in the middle of your screen. Okay? It's going to want to, it's going to, want to move off that way, or it's going to want to move off that way, or that Okay? And usually it'll move in a stereotypical manner. As you get close, every time it will jump down. Every time it will jump down. Every time. So that becomes part of your plan. If every time I move toward it, it jumps down, it would make sense for me to come from a little of the downside so that it jumps into me. Okay? Then. If you can hold that little slit in the middle of your screen as you slowly move forward, and I'm doing all sorts of stuff at once. I'm doing a little, the big knobs kind of going up and down. My right hand is going a little clockwise, a little Those things together, if I can hold it there, then it's a matter of just using a little air, a little fluid, and I'll push through. It will open up for you and you'll push through. I'm actually not going to do this because this is, will be a great opportunity, a great dog to try it in, unless you want me to. I, it's, so the more times we're going bumping into it, like what's the pylorus' job? If some nine millimeter hard object hits it, it is not to open up and say, yes! No, but it's going to shut down and say, no! So <laughs> it'll get... It might be good to show my normal Okay, yeah, we'll do it. So, so as I approach, I've got my plan in mind. I'm using a little air, a little water, and you see it's starting to open for me. We're trying to separate the tissue. I'm moving with some purpose. I'm moving with some force. And I'm keeping that even in my mind's eye. If I lose track of it, because it's going to open up and it's a little down on my screen, so I'm ready, I'm ready to jump forward if it disappears. I know where it disappeared to. So I'm not giving up and going, oh, damn, I missed it. And I'm saying, come on, Nelly. Open up, Genesis, open up. And there you see it's starting to open up a little more. Okay, and boom, we're through. Now, when you first go through, the duodenum takes a hard right-hand turn, so you'll go through and into a wall. Remember that it's a right-hand turn, so in your mind, ah, you say, I need to start moving to the right to open up the duodenum. Come on, Nelly, let me, let me in. He's a little bit on the small side, but it'll... I know my anatomy, and I recognize the duodenal tissue, boom, okay? The whole first section of the duodenum is basically mint on the way in. We'll take a closer look on the way out, okay? So a lot of that is your mind's eye and knowing your anatomy and where you want to, what your plan is. Now, it's just a matter of zooming down, and it's a lot like a water slide. So you understand from anatomy there are various flexures. You will hit them and it looks just like this. And in your mind that you say that's a left turn. So I'm going to go on that part of the water slide where I lose track. But I just like a water slide. I know that somewhere on the other side of this curve I'm going to come back on a water slide, right? So that's the kind of stuff you will lose your lumen a little bit as you go around. So boom, 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 down. You take your biopsies. And as you're coming back, you'll maybe get a better look. Or we might even zoom on out. He's a little, these guys are a little tight. This will be challenging. Boom. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, these guys are small and tight as you might imagine. So that's, um, now, I've been using a lot of air as I've been doing this. So just like Dr. Palmer said, I'm cognizant of this belly getting a little too full. So I'll suction things down a bit there. Now I'm much more relaxed. Okay? Good. And it's just like you did yesterday. You find a foreign body, you see a foreign body, you got a plan. The one thing I also didn't mention yesterday, another important part of the process that you have control of 
is how much of your grasper or your instrument is extruded out of your scope. The further it goes, the less control you have of it, because it's kind of wagging out there. So in general, your plan should be a little bit out, and then me as the endoscopist is the one who's controlling where it goes and what it's grabbing. Okay? And then as I get close to my target, so that ridge right there, then I then if I want, I can tell my tech to advance the instrument a little more. But most of the control and the movement of your grasper should be because you're moving it, not you're trying to have your tech move it to a target. Okay? Good. Anything else? Thank you. Yeah, I just don't quite understand the water slides, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah. they, weren't in, they weren't invented until like 1930, and so Dr. Street probably didn't see them as a kid. But, oh, my, my mic is still on. <laughs> okay, good. So, and remember, as you're exiting the stomach, we always, you'll see that I've, I've suctioned until all those folds and tissue were right around my skull. And even if I'm an uh, intern or an emergency doc looking for a foreign body, on the way out is often where I'll take a little time to examine the esophagus. I'll make sure there's been no regurg in there, no yucky stuff that I need to suction out. We sometimes will actually put a little tube into the dog's esophagus, brush some fluid on in, and then suction that out to clean up so they don't end up with a stricture or esophagitis. So we get a nice good look. Again, I'm demanding that I keep it in the middle of my picture, and boom.